Welcome back to Podcast Recovery, everyone. We are your hosts, David O. And Eric V. And today we are joined by our very special guest, Sarah. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. Record store day. It's, it yeah, record it's store record day. store day. But, and 420. And it's 420. I gotta you, say you, that. You specifically chose 420. I did. Why? Which is also record store I gotta day. ask why. First question. So uh, this- Why will, not, really? Th- right. This will date me. So once upon a time for the youngins, uh, mm-hmm. AOL Instant Messenger- <laughs> Oh, yeah. Came on the scene. Yep. And- the very arduous process of picking the perfect screen name. Oh, yeah. I was such an early adopter mm-hmm. that I jumped in and got Sarah 420. Yep. I was D. Wow. I was D. Hookah 420. Yes. I was. I was like Jimmy Neutron 852 or something. It's okay. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, I know. I didn't even watch Jimmy Neutron. No, that's very. But weird. I chose the name. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? I am. So I am from here. I'm from Maryland. Um, spent a lot of time in Hartford County, and okay. then parents divorced, so back and forth between Hartford County and Towson. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've I've migrated in my older years, but this mm-hmm. is this is my home state. All right. Wait, did you grow up in Hartford County? I did. Where'd you go to high school? Bel Air High School. Ooh. How old are you? Uh, I just turned forty. Oh. You might have went to high school with my wife. Probably. Actually, yeah. My, yeah. my wife went to Bel Air High School and she's turning 40 in two weeks. Yeah, so so here's one of the high school identifiers is once upon a time, a girl- It's a very Maryland thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where'd you mm-hmm. go to high school? Mm-hmm. Um, once upon a time, I got dared to run for class president in ninth <laughs> grade, which was funny because oh. I already had, like I would already start living up to the Sarah 420 reputation. Of course. Yeah. But as a joke, everybody voted for me, and then I won, and I was like... As a freshman? Uh, well, I mean, because each class has a uh, class yeah, president, class not like is, school yeah. president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there you have this like smart but weird burnout as class president. And like one of the things we had to do was like pick class colors. So I made our class colors green and yellow, which everybody hated. That's a horrible colors to pick. Yeah. And um they don't go together well. Yeah, but like then I had to like show up to things and, and all of that. <laughs> it was a terrible, terrible year. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so really? that's that's one of the ways so I was known in our we'll, high school. We'll, we'll see if you know my wife after the podcast. Um I mean, you'd owe her an immense. It, it, no. <laughs> hopefully. No, she was a total nerd. She smoked weed three times and it was, she was a nerd. Those are the people I generally owed immense to. Oh, okay. <laughs> then you might. Um, did you, um, uh, what's my next question? When were you first introduced to recovery? Um, so I grew up knowing that my grandfather was in AA. Oh. <clears throat> so when I was, and, and he had been, he got sober, I think, right right before I was born or, or something like that. So I knew my whole life that my grandfather didn't drink mm-hmm. and he went to church a lot, but mm. that was the, you know, that was him going to meetings. Yeah. Um, and so it was this kind of thing in the background and part of that story was don't drink. Yeah. And so um, that kind of was in, you know, in my psyche. And so, you know, not like alcohol was like, it, it definitely is part of my story, but mm-hmm. it, there's some part of me that was like, no matter what, don't be an alcoholic, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. so like the end of my story was everything else but that. Okay. So I kind of knew it was it was this this thing. And then um, he actually ended up um, getting my, the woman who became my godmother, getting her sober. And so again, it was this whole like, okay, as long as you don't let your drinking get out of hand. Yeah. And, and there are these meetings for the drinkers. Mm-hmm. And so, um, like, that was, but it wasn't, you know, in my brain, it was not ever a thing that I needed to care about. Mm -hmm. Because for a lot of years, I mean, this this story isn't unlike other people, you know, being in high school and, like, smoking weed and and stealing beers or whatever. And, like, doing enough to graduate high school and then doing enough to graduate College. I mean, so in college, the the first year, the first two years, I lived well, on campus. Let me campus. ask my last question. How yeah. long have you been clean? Oh, uh, 13 years and change. All right. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. So you just celebrated 13. Yeah, in January. Days ago, in January. 
fantastic. Yeah. All right. Now, with all that out of the way, take it away. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, this is a long answer to yes, the question, yes, yes, right? Yes. Um, so in in college, um, I lived in a dorm, and we had, like, a giant shared bathroom that mm-hmm. had two regular size, like, toilet stalls and then a handicap stall. Mm-hmm. And the handicap stall was nicknamed Sarah's Bedroom. <laughs> right? But, like, I didn't have a problem drinking. Right? Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. Do you like, remember your first drink? Um, hmm. I don't, I don't know if I remember the first one. I remember the first time being drunk. Mike's Hard Lemonade. Oh. Yes. Right? At a high school party. Yeah. In Falston. Sounds mm-hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> and why, why we picked that? I don't know. I think. It was just that time. It, just, it, it was on commercials and, it, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, I like lemonade. This could be really, really tasty. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it was like whatever is left over in the morning was a breakfast drink. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my fir- yeah. My first night was, yeah, Smirnoff Ice and, and Smirnoff. Um, Mike's Hard Lemonade. Do they still make Smirnoff Ice? They have to. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I haven't drank it. Really? Well. I don't know. It was so popular. I know they don't make though. Zima anymore. Zima is not a thing. Yo, so I have a Zima story. Of, so remember being <laughs> in high school and like you, when you find somebody older who's going to buy liquor for you, it mm-hmm. was like one really important, like they're like, all right, what am I buying for you? And, yeah. and, and I think that that's why the party said Mike's Hard Lemonade because like that just came out of my mouth and then yeah. older boyfriend at the time was like, here is a oh. case. Yeah. A friend of mine was entrusted with all of the money for all of the alcohol of course, for yeah. that group's senior week yeah. and told his other older brother, Zima. <laughs> so like Why? $800 worth of Zima. Oh, yeah. And do <laughs> liquor store liquor store employees have to know when somebody's coming in with like a grocery list, they're like, they're buying this from I mean, yeah. kids. The Smirnoff was like Sprite. Right. It was like yeah, it was dirty like, sprite. Like dirty yeah. Sprite. Yeah, it was dirty right. sprite. Yeah, that's exactly what it Because I'm looking it up on on the computer here and it's like it looks it's like dirty sprite. Dirty sprite, but then they have like a um do you remember like push popsicles? Like the popsicles you push. Push up? pops, yeah. The Flintstones. Like, Flintstones? Not Flintstones. Yes. Not the ones that are frozen. Not the push. Oh, like, oh, um, yeah, the the ice, yeah, the ice, icy pops, icy pops, yeah. the little plastic. They ones. have like a version of icy pop Smirnoff. For liquor? Yeah. No, for Smirnoff. Well, that's like, liquor, right? They have like an like Is it a, alcoholic? It's like red, white, and berry Smirnoff. Like it looks like a icy pop. Like colored? Whoa. That's I can't see the color of it. I that sounds terrible. The, that sounds like so uh, much sugar and diabetes waiting to happen. Diabetes. That sounds awful. I need water just thinking about that. Yes. That sounds <laughs> awful. I eat people with diabetes. All right. So diabetes. how did you get it? Take us from the beginning. Diabetes. How did you get oh, here? Oh, well, we're, we're halfway through. So, I know. Yeah. Um, we're doing a Tarantino style. That, we'll that's okay. Forth. That's Diabetes. fine. Um, so, yeah. So, I the real introduction to recovery was this. You know, so I, after. No, after I want to hear the introduction to drugs. Oh, to drugs? All right. Yes. All right. <laughs> so Fuck the recovery shit. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I want to hear the dirty shit. So, dirty. so there's the, when did the, the drugs actually enter versus mm-hmm. when did my little childlike brain who like from the beginning was mm-hmm. like, oh yes, addiction. Yeah. Oh, yep. yes. Mm-hmm. Like other people sat through whatever dare or Sunday school or whatever. And mm-hmm. adults would be like, don't do drugs. And they'd be like, okay. Yeah. And for me, I'd be like, watch me. Yeah. You know? Like, well, I got ratted out. And I've said this on numerous podcasts, but I got ratted out in fucking dare because I was smoking cigarettes at the time that I was stealing from my mom. And some little girl, I still know her name, but I'm not going to put it out there. She was like, David smoked cigarettes. And the cop immediately was just like, you think you're cool? You think, you, you, think, you think you're cool by smoking cigarettes? I was like, man, I don't know. I was like, whatever. I was, I, probably where so do you intense, get them? I was like, dude. I find them. Leave me alone. So the dare officer, like in addition to bringing in the beautiful briefcase that had all, all the of drugs. the drugs. It's so bad. And you're sitting there, you're like, okay, so there's a couple of white ones. Some are more powdery and that one's mm-hmm. chunky. And, and they don't really line up like this with this paraphernalia. And so like yeah. un- until I understood how it it worked, I was like, all right, so one of these items and, and one of these drugs makes – whatever the inner badass that i want to be or Mm -hmm. you know whatever my little heart desired but the other thing the dare officer did was his like shock tactic because i remember him coming in and being like who here knows how to make their bed everybody was like what and so maybe like you pull up the cover no uh you pull up the sheet no 
And he'd be like, take everything off of the bed and start from scratch. And like, like that, like that's my biggest memory of Dare other than- What was he getting? Like, what the fuck was I the don't, point? I don't even, I don't know. Again, <laughs> like if it was like uh, some weird like alpha flex thing. I'm sure it was. Cops making beds. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. Bel Air, man. It's fucking Bel Air. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, like, I remember, you know, the first cigarettes were uh, 11 years old. Mm-hmm. Church camp. Yep. Um, Marlboro Reds, which when I did Marlboro smoke, Reds, that was. Nice. Yeah. I remember, like, smoking a whole one and mm-hmm. being like, this is horrible. <sighs> I love it. I have to learn how to smoke so I don't want to vomit. Well, it was, at least it wasn't like a Capri or a Virginia Slim. No, we went deep. Hell Marlboro yeah. Reds yeah. in an orchard at a church <laughs> camp. Yep. Mm. And uh, and then like after that, even when there weren't cigarettes, like hang out with friends and like finding like a stick and lighting it on fire and being like, <laughs> it's like smoking. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I remember doing stupid shit like that. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I That's remember been... that. Or the candy cigarettes and the bubble yeah. gum cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, oh hell yeah. Any anything to to mm-hmm. mimic. And then I, I I do remember lighting like having like sticks and stuff. Yeah. And being like this well, is. So we were cool. the last generation to have cigarette commercials. Right. Yeah. Like I I remember, well, I, like, I remember the old Cools commercials. I remember the camel like in the um in magazines and stuff. Yeah. The like, Joe, yeah. Joe like, Camel. Joe. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yep. Joe sm- Camel. He made no smoking more. cool. Yeah. You know? He was cool. And then you would see the the cigarette dispensing machines every mm-hmm. once in a while and be like, dude, they were in like grocery stores. Uh, there was one in Lapa's for years mm-hmm. up until we were in our twenties. Yep. And that oh was wow. Gone. Yeah. I was yeah. very sad when it left. You know, yeah. it's when like I went a piece to of Amsterdam, Americana. they had a Heineken vending machine. Well, now they have that vending machines sense. for everything. You know, that makes like, sense. Like, I mean, if you go into an airport, they have like a vending machine for like food and for um yeah there's like did you forget your electronics did you forget your makeup here there's a vending machine for that <laughs> like you know what i mean like, all right let's continue back to yeah. you um all right so we're smoking sticks in church smoking sticks <laughs> are you drinking mud water uh not quite yet i remember yeah. um stealing beers from my mom's mm. fridge and figuring out how to like remove the air conditioning vent or, or and like hide them in there oh and i didn't drink them but it was like this like <laughs> my precious like i know <laughs> i know i would get home from school and just like look at the vent mm-hmm. like, did everybody I have, have a secret spot like you mm-hmm. had a see like so what was in your secret spot besides the cold warm beer weed well no i'm, I'm asking sarah yeah uh, so it was all in there I for think... me it was like a like i had like a playboy magazine that was super oh, old yeah i had a shit ton of matches for some reason mm-hmm. like tons of matches and lighters. boys are pyros yeah we're yeah. all like yeah. i remember when my parents found it they were like you you just have like i, I literally had like just a grocery bag amounts of matches. full of matches you know <laughs> just like they're like you could live the house on fire i'm like what? they're mine but i didn't yeah no I think um, mine had, I shouldn't say I think, I know, I know for sure. Uh-huh. It had things from the Wicca section of Hot Topic. Sweet. That's something okay. that belongs up there. Okay. Yeah. That was like, I don't, I in in my brain. You, were, I was like, you just seen the craft. You were like, man. Yeah. I was like it. crying and writing poetry <laughs> in the moonlight. And, you know, like, I was reading Sylvia Plath. No, I wasn't that cool. I, <laughs> I Okay. So speaking of Sylvia Plath, my 11th grade uh, poetry teacher said that my poetry reminded her of Sylvia Plath. And you're, like, you're, that I felt 100% so, tracks. felt so. That 100% uh, tracks, dude. Do you feel a pull to put your head in I was like, oh, that's what I said. I was like, oh, yeah. Was she writing to... the bell jar? Is that her big book? Yeah. yeah. Okay, back to you, sir. Um. All right, smoking sticks. You shut stealing up, Stealing beers. <laughs> I'll shut up, yeah. No, you're, you're fine <laughs> over the shoulder. Um, yeah, so I, uh... Yeah, so I, I, you know, remember stealing the beers and stealing the cigarettes and getting in trouble. I think it was my 12th or 13th birthday, you know, because you're a kid. You don't realize that, like, if you light up a cigarette in your bedroom, like, your parent is going to be like. Oh, they're going to smell it. Because my mom didn't smoke. Mm. So there was no nose blindness. And, yep. you know, her banging on the door. I smell you. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. And getting grounded for that. And, um, and then. I ended up on a a trip to Europe when I was like 15 and the smoking age was 15. Yeah. So I started smoking Marlboro Reds at 15. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, so the the smoking weed and drinking was like, if I was with this friend or that friend or... Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. And like... 
It was social and it was fun at that point. Yeah. And so it was like, it was by high school that, um, you know, I I would smoke weed with coworkers. I worked at a, a bagel shop. I'll let them remain anonymous. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, you close the store and, and you smoke weed and eat yeah. weird sandwiches that yeah. you make. Mm-hmm. And um, and it was like, you know, I, I was smart enough that I could get away with that being life. It wasn't, there weren't terrible consequences. Yeah, they would put yeah. like the alcohol checkpoint up in you know on route 24 and i get a little nervous driving through it yeah um but it wasn't you know for me and at that time like i really thought i was i was smart enough to get away with it yeah you know yeah and it wasn't and and it was such a part of my identity Mm -hmm. oh yeah because i wasn't i wasn't particularly pretty or funny or talented or like desirable or you know, like I had, I had friends, but I wasn't like popular. I, I, you know, I knew the artsy kids, but I wasn't like the like. There was no area where I was like. You really might have known my wife. The best of the best. Because she was an artsy kid. Yeah. Okay. And so, like, so me being the the girl, the kid who was smoking cigarettes before everybody, mm-hmm. like borrowing cars and driving before Mm -hmm. I had my license before anybody Mm -hmm. and then smoking weed like that became my identity I was like the weird kid in the smart classes I wasn't one of the preppy kids I wasn't one of the super smart kids it was your level of attention yeah I was the girl in Mm -hmm. doc sitting in the back of the honors classes yeah and like kind of you know new people in all worlds but like kind of caught in between them and then there was this other thing was like so my parents um, my parents are good people. Mm-hmm. I always, when I when I first got clean and I would hear other people's stories, um, I would always be like, what's my problem? Like, mm-hmm. I know this girl down in Florida who her mom was a cook for the Hells Angels. And when I heard that, I'm like, all right. Well, like a meth cook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, just spaghetti, <laughs> yes, yeah. you know. She's not making creme brulee <laughs> right. for, the, for the local <laughs> motorcycle gang. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 She was she was a meth cook. And um, and I remember being like, all right. So like, that makes she, sense. She's got a reason. Yeah. You know, like mm. my parents, they, my dad's a teacher. My mom did marketing. Mm-hmm. They're good people. Yeah. They didn't drink. I didn't. I, like I've never never saw any drugs from any family members. Yeah. Um, then and, leave it to the cops at age eleven to introduce right. it to them yep. in school. They come in green. They come in brown. <laughs> they come in white. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, but so so my parents when I was young they were like, all right, to give our child a good life, we'll move out to the suburbs to Bel Air. But they'd always lived in the city, lived mm-hmm. in Charles Village, and yeah, and they yeah, were kind of yeah. artsy too. And so it was always this thing of like. Well, we hate living in the suburbs, but we're doing it for you to have a good education. Mm-hmm. But like, we just want to be in the city. And that created this thing in my head of like, Bel Air is like a not where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And so like, as soon as I could figure out how to borrow cars. Um, did your parents move back to the city? Well, so my parents split when I was nine and my dad did. Okay. Um, and so then I was like doing the like back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And um. And then, you know, as soon as I graduated high school, my mom moved back into the city. Okay. And so my whole world was like, like a lot of people, how do I be older? But it was like, how do I get in the city? Mm-hmm. And so it was like borrowing cars and driving to Towson. Yeah. To go to record when you're like 16, trader. right? Like, yeah. I, I remember when I was like 16 or 17 was when I was like, all right, it's time to go to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So where'd you go to college? Towson. Oh, yep. yeah. Yep. Go, go Tigers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go yep. Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, how did I get on that track? Why was I talking about the... High school. High what school. Did you major your, par- in college? your parents were yeah. in in the suburbs for you, yeah. but they really wanted to be... Yeah, and, and the whole thing about, like, um, looking for something deeper, darker, looking for something outside that Match how I already felt on the inside. Yeah. And I think that that's why, like... I picked Sarah 420 before I was, that was even who I was. Like I built myself into that identity. Yeah. It's funny, the only time anyone ever attempted to put me into rehab was the one point in high school where I was actually dating um, a guy who is based on APG. 
like uh, he was a soldier. Oh, right? a- oh uh, Annapolis Proving Ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, and because Aberdeen, I Aber- was like Annapolis. Annapolis. Aberdeen. 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 Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where did I hit? I hit a whole. Is there a shit. gong? Yeah. yeah <laughs> you no, say Aberdeen the... Proving Ground, a I mean, gong yeah. goes off. Yeah, <laughs> I got gonged, gonged myself. Um, and so it was the one time in high school where I wasn't drinking or smoking weed because I was like following around this 22 year old soldier. Uh, and, um, but like, I also had picked up a copy of William S. Burroughs Naked Lunch. <laughs> okay. Cause I was at that point, I was reading all the, the beats and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, starting to hold on Naked Lunch guys. Um, if so you're a, a mom's, Kerouac fan too. Yeah. If you ever go to a mom's organic market. Try it, Naked Lunch. It's great. That's a free promotion for you, moms. It's great. Is yeah. it? What is what it? A, like, a, like wait, a, you live in Hamden. Get a Naked granola? Lunch. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know what, what is Naked it? Lunch is. Naked Lunch is the rest is like the restaurant inside of oh. moms. Oh, it's called Naked Lunch. Yeah, it's delicious. When There's I, a mom's organic market right near me. They might not have it. Not all of um, yeah, the not. moms have Naked Lunches. The one they in Hamden the best, does. They have though. the best fucking cheddar cheese I've ever. They had They have the best sushi bowls. Like, okay, oh, so we're good. we're off track. No, I was just hungry. Yeah. Uh, it was at mom's yesterday. William S. Yeah. Burroughs, you're reading okay. the beats. Yeah, Kerouac. so reading okay. Kerouac and, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, like that whole Ginsburg and- I um, love Ginsburg. Dude, yeah. I used to read Ginsburg, Ginsburg on shrooms. Holy fuck. Yeah. Dude, Howl. Howl by Ginsburg. If anybody's out there, read Howl. It's fantastic. And you if, don't, don't need the shrooms. If Sand shrooms. If you're too lazy to read it, watch the James Franco cartoon that they did where he reads Howl out loud. Oh, really? And there's this trippy cartoon that acts the whole thing out. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good. All right. And there's a, a picture book Ooh. that they also made. Ooh. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, somehow I it, with Naked Lunch, I decided, all right, time to step up my drug game. My mom had gotten like dental surgery, so she had hydrocodone. Oh, yeah. But like I didn't really know what I was doing. So no. she was gone and I got a spoon from the kitchen and um, a mirror and some pills of hydrocodone, not really understanding that, like, the spoon isn't necessary, you know, because I didn't know about, like, yeah, crushing yeah. up and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so I took the, <laughs> the spoon and crushed up the pills on the mirror and was like, okay, now you you put it up your nose. And, like, it's hydrocodone, which is just fancy Tylenol. It really yeah. didn't do anything. But, mm-hmm. like, it Burn. was part of the experience. Yeah. And then I just, I don't know, went to school. Mm -hmm. My mom comes home and she sees my dresser that has crushed up pills and a spoon (laughs) and a mirror. Clean up? No. (laughs) (laughs) It didn't dawn on me to do that. And so she and my dad yank me out of school, drag me to a rehab, who knows which one. Mm -hmm. And um and they try to do an intake on me. Mm -hmm. And but like I passed a drug test and a rapid blood test. Hmm. And they checked me for like, and and I was honest with them. Yeah. And they were like, they told my parents like, um, yeah, your daughter's a nightmare, but yeah, she's not she's on kinda drugs. Just, she's kind of just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, she's just fucked up. <laughs> um, and like, man, did that give me a reason to like hate my parents even more? Mm-hmm. Like now, you really can't tell me. Oh, like yeah. my tentative acknowledgement of curfews went out the window. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, and that's the only time that I ever was in rehab before getting clean. Okay. Yeah, um, I didn't, I thought rehab was for fancy people. I thought it was for celebrities. Yeah, and like Eric. rich people. Well, and Eric loves rehab. Well, yeah, it's nice. Rehab's great. Oh. It's a nice little break. You know? I like to go once a year, you know, yeah. just keep you know, it fresh. It's, just, it's, it's a good break. break, you know. <laughs> Especially the ones with like the caterers and all that shit. You guys don't have steak day? Yeah. No, no. We did not have steak day in jail, no. Yeah, right. We had Rottweiler day where you're eating what essentially looks like a dog turd. Yep. That's yeah. fun. Um, so then I, so then you get to Towson. So I get to Towson. I get to Towson and um, I wanted to go. Deceivingly big party school. Yeah, it, it is. Of. Yeah. Um, you know it's a good know. school though, and like, don't know, don't knock Towson. Towson's, it's incredible. It's a very good school. It's right now. Mm-hmm. It's better ranked than I think most of the University of Maryland schools. Really? Yeah. Nice. I know that because I'm in the midst of doing some events to Towson. Oh. Wait, are you are you gonna be doing alumni stuff? Um, I have I, strong feelings about this. Yeah, I. I We're I, not gonna I, get into it. W- w- We're not I, doing it. You have to tell me for. I'm about a tiger. This. Are you, you a tiger? Huh. Are you an angry tiger? An angry like tiger. a grumpy tiger? tiger? I graduated from Towson. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 
We can talk about alumni activities. Yeah, yeah. after. Yeah. After. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I went to Towson because I had um, visions of becoming a, a film major. I only applied <laughs> cool. to two schools, Don't NYU. Laugh. That's so rude. No, I was an EMF major, too. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, That's yeah. when I graduated. All right, yeah. well, so then you'll appreciate this. We so, probably were in the same classes. I get to, to Towson. I applied to Towson and NYU. I got into both, and my dad... Again, a school teacher was like, "That's great. We're poor. You go to Towson." That's a bummer, yeah, man. Um, that's a, a bummer. fucking bummer. Yeah, and so I um, so I'm at Towson, and like I take a semester of the EMF classes, and then I realize like you can't you can't um pass and not do work. Like I was mm-hmm. used to. Oh no, you can't. You have to do work in that. Yeah. You can't like that. just make no. a movie the night before it's due. No, no. you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't study and pass a test like an yeah. hour before. It's like, oh right. wait, I had to come with a project. Yes. Mm-hmm. What? Yep. And and you also couldn't be uh, like an like an antisocial little shit. Oh, I said that word. Can I say that oh, word? Yeah. You can be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. be yeah. antisocial, but you have to do a lot of the work yourself. Right. That's what I learned. Well, right. So you can't be antisocial and want to do nothing. Yeah. You have to be manipulative and mm-hmm. do nothing or antisocial and work a lot if you want to mm-hmm. pass. So I was like, all right. These yeah. are cliff notes for Towson, everybody. Yeah. Take, my, take notes. My take last notes. This semester, is how you cheat. I think I, I, because I had four production classes my last semester. Yeah. And I think I worked like 100 hours a week. Or oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. Christ. I had to quit working. Like yep. actual work. College. Um, yeah, and I, I had Nerds. other EMF majors in my dorm who they were always, yeah, running around yep. filming. They had to keep track of expensive equipment and like, yeah, uh, yeah there's none of that. So um, I was in a an intro philosophy class and I was like, ooh, I can do this quickly with very little work. Mm-hmm. Cause like when people would say, um, oh, I gotta go study, I didn't, I had no idea what they were doing. I didn't do that. Well, I just was like, <laughs> like I wonder what they're doing in there. Well, you can study like an hour before a test. That's what I always did. Yeah, so, like, I just I, knew like, If you had a study guide, like what's the problem? <laughs> Enough of you, shoot. I'm just asking. I know. So, um, so yeah, I, I discovered the world of philosophy, mm-hmm. which uh, meant that at least how I did it, I, which involved a lot of Adderall, um, I could Shocking. just barely get through it. Mm-hmm. it um, and I technically have, well, actually have an undergrad degree in philosophy. Nice. And a lot of books that I have no idea what's in them. I may have like learned them quickly in, mm-hmm. out, or whatever. Just but, to regurgitate okay, the information. Did you actually read a book? In college, yeah, I read a lot. I I read a lot of them. I just also like smoked weed morning, noon. I smoked weed so much that later on, when people I know are like, "Wait, you got clean? Were you doing drugs?" I'm like, "Here's the thing: you actually don't know me not on drugs." Yep. Like it was. Yeah. All day. Twenty four seven. Every yeah. day. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I um I was constantly on housing probation. <laughs> because you're on double secret. Wait, you probation. lived on campus. I lived on what campus. Is, why would you live on campus, man? Because my, oh wait, you don't have yeah. Because my parents I, were I from around why. here, yeah. and the deal we're pores over I, here. Hey, you piece hey, of shit. Hey, hey. Yeah, rich bastard. Well, so the deal with my parents Damn. was, if I'm not going to NYU, then I'm not living with you. You yeah. have to make yeah. let me live on campus yeah. the first two years. Um, also, I don't brothers and sisters. So for me, it was like. They ha- not like they have to be my friends. That sounds really pathetic. But like, there's people there, mm-hmm. um, and yeah. So it just it just worked out. But like, my dorm was above the housing and residence life office. Hmm. So they would come in on Mondays, and their office would be like absolutely baked out. And they would send security up there, and I'd be like, "My room's clear. Wasn't me, bro. I don't know what you mean." It totally wasn't me. Bro. I would do shit like um, save empty wine bottles from parties and drink water out of them, sitting on the front steps of the dorms. <laughs> and then when like just to be a dick, yeah, they would come and I'd be like, "Show me the rule that says I can't do this." During parents' weekend, I printed out tons of porn. And in the middle of the night, covered all of the bulletin boards, all of the bathrooms, everything like that. And they like knew it was me, but they couldn't prove it. I'm just happy it was a girl. I slept. I'm just happy. Yeah, that's a dude. That's that's fucking gross. Like that's so. I slept with my RA and then reported him for sleeping with a resident. (laughs) 
<laughs> kind of not cool. Kind of not cool. He was, wow. Uh, That's uh, epic. So like. Was he a douche? Yeah, okay. yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Um, so like I was I was constantly like on the you know, on the verge. I was I was on housing probation after oh I even God, graduated. Gosh. Um but yeah, so like but my whole thing at that point was like, yeah, I'm smoking weed and every once in a while like eating mushrooms and and drinking and all that, but like it was it was fine. Like I I had a job up in Towson. Yeah, fine. <laughs> but like in my world, you know, as long as I was doing what I had to do, and that was like the whole thing with my addiction, even to the end, was like, I'm gonna do what I need to do for you, and then I've earned the right. Mm-hmm. Like, a re- wh- yeah, the reward base using. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yep. I, I've sat through the family thing, mm-hmm. I've earned the right. I, dude, you know, ad- adults do that all the time. Like, oh, I just put in a 40 hour work week, I'm gonna go home and, right. you know, drink a fucking thing of wild yeah, or, turkey and punch my wife across the right. room. <laughs> or I sat through my kid's baseball game. Therefore, I, you know. Yeah. Like, mm. um, you, were dr- my, you were drinking bottomless my, mimosas the no, whole time. I'm at my kid's baseball game. Yeah. Like, I... Way to go, Chad. Yeah. Good job. Chad. Like the mommy needs wine t-shirts. Oh, God. Know? Oh, God. Ugh. If you're out there and you're, yeah, ma, it's wine o'clock. Like, you're a douchebag. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I don't. I'm, Sorry, lady. You're a douchebag. Yeah. If you have to drink to get through a day with your precious children, mm-hmm. um, re- replace them with other kids. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Se- swap them out at a Walmart. Yeah. Sell those children. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I got, I graduated high school or college. Um, it, as a lot of people know, including my parents, philosophy is not a job. That's not. No, no, um, you don't sit in the symposium anymore and, yeah. and teach the youth <clears throat> yeah. of Greece anymore. Yeah. So I, um. Oh, Do you have a favorite philosopher? Um, not really. Okay, not that's fair. I, No. I, I thought he was kind of egotistical, and mm-hmm. I think it was mostly because the people who loved Nietzsche, what about I didn't. Socrates? Are douches. Yeah, they're all tool fans. What about Socrates? <laughs> Socrates is Socrates has a one one of his sayings. I read, I like I, I read a by. Plato's Symposium. I've like I've read some. I like the Aristotle. definition thing about Socrates. Like no, because no of the good place, words. I sort of I've read a little bit of like a Manual Con. Yeah, this is that. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a great show. I'll say Descartes. Um, Descartes fantastic. The only the thing is is like he gets through like. Proving that he doesn't know if he exists or anybody else exists. He might be a brain in a jar. I know. But then because of like the pressure of Christianity, he's like, therefore God. Yeah. And it's like, man, you sold yeah. out. Well, let's just leave well, it at four meditations. What's his choice, man? Well, like, I mean, a lot of those uh, philosophers. You want, you want to get inquisitioned or something? A lot shit? of those yeah. philosophers were fucking killed. Yeah. Like, yeah. they were like, you, you're you free thinking? Like, you're not believing in Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> drink, drink this hemlock. Right. <laughs> In that voice. <laughs> yes, drink this hemlock. <laughs> yeah, so I um so what was I prepared for? I thought I was going to law school, but um, you know, drugs. And <laughs> uh so but like I could I could read and write a mm-hmm. lot. So I ended up being like a, a writer, a technical writer, and then I ended up getting a job with uh this kind of fancy consultancy that was friends with my mom and I had a good job that was like way better than I should have. And I had an option. I could double down. I could have started a killer, you know, career making six figures by 30 and all of that. Yeah. Um, Except I still like smoked weed all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were too busy to really pay attention to what I was doing. And I did, again, just enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... And then I met a guy. So it's always a fucking guy. MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> you met a guy on MySpace. I, I met a guy, or he met this me is the most through story ever. MySpace. He was <laughs> MySpace famous for his music. Who was it, Tom? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tom's brother. Um, so yeah, so he and he came from the the Baltimore club world. Ooh, so okay, that's you know all yeah. right. Again, now have, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, so uh, he was well known from like the origin of Baltimore Club back in the day. He okay. had a, a record label, and he knew a friend of a friend, and I didn't know this at the time, but he had spent a lot of time reading the depths of my MySpace profile. The depths and, of my MySpace. <laughs> yeah, so like we are my Tumblr. What does that mean? Well, so oh no, the live journal links. So he, are he, he Facebook stalked you before Facebook. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
And so he he knew. So the first time I met him, he was looking for um, an assistant to work at the record studio. And okay. I thought that that was super cool and way more interesting than what I was actually doing. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I will definitely spend nights and weekends helping you, you know, um, build websites. Where and- was the record studio? Um, so at that time, it was down on the Eastern Shore. Oh. He had rebuilt it down there um, in Denton. Gur. Oh, Denton. All right. Yeah, the armpit of the armpit. I'm yeah. sorry, anyway, from Denton. No, but you know fine. how bad it is. Yeah. The Eastern Shore is the Eastern Shore. Man. Yeah. Um, I had a girlfriend who uh, her dorm was Denton Hall at the University of Maryland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was it also an armpit? Oh, of course it was. Yeah. yeah, it was one of the old. It was one of the old dorms. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, yeah, when I first met him, like our very first, you know, he was like, let's have sushi. I was like, I love sushi. And we sat through dinner and like, we had all of these things in common. Mm -hmm. We loved all the same things. And it was in my brain. I was like, this guy is made in a fucking I'm looking at somebody who I'm actually not physically attracted to, but there were so many perfect things and he was so talented. Mm-hmm. And like that's been my downfall through a lot of my adulthood, particularly with men. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's business relationships or partners, is that um I I will support and follow somebody's talent uh. to the to my own detriment. Um, I think because some part of me wants somebody to do that for me, maybe like the girl who isn't special or I don't really even lack of self-confidence, feeling mm-hmm. unlovable. But mm-hmm. I just I would sit in the record studio. I would listen to him like mix and scratch and DJ and him produce other people's music. And and I was so fascinated by it. Um, and his thing was he knew that as long as I stayed stoned i stayed docile and it was like a couple of weeks of absolute fairy tale and then at some point the flip switch the switch flipped strike that reverse yep (laughs) um and it got really controlling and really abusive Mm -hmm. and more the more stoned i was the more decisions he made for me um, and then he was, he knew how to get into my brain mm. and he knew how to say the exact right thing. He would say things like, if you knew how to be in a relationship, you wouldn't have been single when I met you. Or like, you have to understand because that's of, a dark fucking statement. Right. Or uh, you have to understand that for you to date the caliber of guy like me, <laughs> I have to put a lot of work in to teach oh. you how to act. So this guy was like a platinum ah. level gaslighter. Yeah. Ah. Holy shit. At one point, and he's grooming you. Yeah. Oh, oh completely. Yeah. At one point, he <clears throat> grabbed my arm. Like the first time he was like physically, he actually hurt me. He grabbed my arm and held it up above my head and forcibly put deodorant on me because he was like, I'm sick of you not knowing how to do this. And like, it wasn't like- How to do what? <laughs> I, 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 but it was, it was, he would, if he was in my apartment while my I was at work, he this. would move all of the furniture like six inches. Oh, so he was one of those people who just fuck with you. And and tell me that it wasn't. When he would be, like, supposedly at home at his place on the Eastern Shore, I was living in Mount Vernon at the time. Uh-huh. You realize that's the plot from Barry? That's like a subplot from the show Barry where it's like, oh, yeah, I'll just go into her house and I'll move all of her stuff around like six inches oh. until she goes crazy. Yeah, well, that's how I felt. Yeah. I felt. <laughs> this just reminded me of a joke. You know how uh, Helen Keller's mom used to punish her? She would rearrange Rearrange the furniture. furniture. Awful. Awful. That's a great joke, though. It's a terrible joke. Terrible joke. Don't do that to blind people. It's rude. It's rude. Very very rude. rude. Because if they're like Helen Keller, they also can't complain. (laughs) That's true, too. Nope, 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 nope. I was about to do a a Helen Keller impersonation. (laughs) Nope, not going to happen. Not today. (laughs) Nope. Not today, (laughs) Satan. Keep going. So this guy is completely mind-fucking. Yeah. And it got... Like it, it got it got worse and worse and worse. Of course. Um, and then it got it got sexually brutal, and then he started Jesus. filming it being sexually brutal. And like, it one of the times we literally were filming a music video in the Belvedere Hotel. 
Right. Like there the used to here. be this um, this bottle club at the very bottom. Mm-hmm. So you have like Owl Bar, and then underneath of that was um, it was for a while it was called like um, Sweets or something like that, mm-hmm. um, which. Uh, uh, luckily from your your fan base i'm thinking nobody that i say any of this is gonna like come kill me but if you do come for me man yeah um it it was owned and leased by like absolute g's in the baltimore like drug organized crime oh yeah yeah in the underground and so like when we were signing like the paperwork in order to film this music video there we're sitting in this room and it's like floor to ceiling stolen goods drugs all of that and i'm like again the part of me was terrified another part of me was like yeah look at me i've arrived Mm. and it's sick it's sick looking back on it it's scary looking back on it but at that time it was like this is the level of excitement and danger or whatever like and in some weird way like this level of terror justifies how dark I've already felt inside anyway. Because before I felt dark and I had no reason. Bel Air, yeah. sub- suburbs. Yeah. You know, like too many Barnes and Noble nights. Like, what? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I also. Yeah, Box Hill North is not exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the yeah, darkness. I, I did live in Box Hill North for a while. You knew my wife. I guarantee <laughs> yeah, you knew yeah. my wife. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, shout out Huxley Circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Also, Box Hill Pizzeria, fantastic crab cakes. Go oh, my some. God. Well, yeah. So good. It, their pizza comes out so hot. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So the, the restaurant's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I, it also, though, was at the point where I was like, okay, well, now I can't leave. Mm-hmm. I now know too much. I know all of these people who are moving weight around the city. Yeah. I know their faces. They know my faces. They know where I live. Like the, the guy I was. Um, That's the, all in your head, man. Though, like at that point, mm. right? Is it though? Um, no. Some of it. They, they, they Some sh- of it. shot a dude like right in front of my apartment. Like they, they, he would. Um, after I, I broke up. So I broke up with him. Oh, so anyway, we we're at the Belvedere. We filmed a music video there over a Saturday and Sunday. That Saturday night, there are literally like other famous Baltimore club and rap people in my apartment in the place next door who can hear all of it him like brutally raping me and nobody did anything and the next day i had to go into day two of this music video and there's like the city paper coverage other like a writer for spin all of these people and some of them knew and then like i ended up breaking up with him shortly after because i thought i was going crazy and i thought i was going to hurt his career and like that's really where because all of like at the time i didn't say the word abused because i didn't know that for like a long time after that i thought i was losing my mind i didn't know how to act i'm like crying inside this is very sad and and um and like after I broke up with him, it took like everything for me to just not walk into traffic. Yeah. I could barely hold it together at work. And then that was like when the economy shut down from the big recession in like t- 2008. 2008. Yeah. And I was working on government contracts. And so because I was already basically useless, I lost my job. And so at that point, it was like any little part of me that was like, do these drugs, but not these drugs, you know, got to stay functional or whatever, like out the window, the, out. Yeah. It All it took was the right person to walk through the door with the right drug and we're off to the races. And any part of me that said like, <clears throat> you know, don't be don't be a junkie who's going to put needles in your arm. Don't smoke crack. <clears throat> don't ever try, try coke. Don't take a hand pill, full of pills. It was like, why not? Yeah. Why not? And and I've heard uh, the first time I heard somebody else say drugs save my life, I felt such a relief and I felt really known in that moment because if I hadn't found drugs, I probably would have killed myself. Yeah. I have a, a lot of f- suicide in my world. I actually went to the funeral from somebody who committed suicide last night. And <sighs> because we as a society don't have enough resources or a, a, uh, enough conversation for people who are in that part, 
you know, when they say that, like, there's more depression than there's ever been, and there's also more drug use than there's ever been, mm -hmm. it's because of You don't society. think it's a correlation? Yeah, of course there is. And, like, you know, uh, thank, thank, thank God for the drugs, because it meant that I, I survived because I could shut my brain down. Yeah, you could and that's that's mm -hmm. really what drugs yeah. are, right? They're an escape. They're yeah. an escape. Mm -hmm. um, they're a way of making time and life go by. Yeah. Anesthetizing it. It's the slow suicide. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I don't, um, I don't, you know, for a, a minute early in recovery, I was like mad at the people who like this person introduced me to this drug and I would never. And now I'm like, it really, it it just happened to be them. It could have been somebody else yeah, with any other been, drugs. Yeah, it could have been anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and it, and, it was while on drugs I finally realized that like I was abused. Yeah. Um, he was abusive, and I started being able to speak up about it. And I sent um, a couple of the people who I know who were like reporters who had gotten on who would I had been like, hey, I'm helping shoot this music video. I've got all yeah, these yeah, people, yeah. and I let them know like <clears throat> if you could please stop covering. And, uh, you know, the name of my ex. If you could please stop covering him. Mm -hmm. If you could stop putting him on the, the front cover of the city paper. If you could stop naming his track, track of the year. Because he was like, he got coverage every single mm -hmm. week. And it was seeing this person and this face. And I was like, you need to know who he is. Yeah. And I would tell them and they'd be like, yeah, I mean, you know, there's two sides to every story. Jesus. You know, and like. And there are some people who like. And now we have shit like Diddy coming out, right? Like, but like, there's somebody who like the diddler, the diddler, yeah. p fucking diddler. The people who built their career based on that access, and like, and um, you know, in our step work, they talk about like, are there people we have done harm to that will, you know, we we could never forgive? Like, there's some people from that world that like. I may owe amends to, but like life's too short. I don't know that we ever really can sort through all of that. No, no, no. no. It's also we we'll only give amends when it doesn't harm anyone, right? right? Yeah. So like, if it harms you, like, yeah. If it harms you, that. fuck. That well, person. or I'd only go in to harm them. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. Um. So, yeah. I mean, that's really what kicked off the the big bad end of it. And like, I'm I am grateful that the end part of my addiction, the everyday use, the shooting up, the heroin. It's kind of a good title, the big bad end to it. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That it 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 came so so quick and so fast and so hard. Like, um, and that it was before fentanyl. Oh, you yeah. know, like uh, I um I remember. Yeah, in, we're like we're right yeah. around that same generation where we got out right before yep. fentanyl became huge. I remember people falling out and like you could beat them awake. Uh, yeah, fentanyl's scary. Yeah, yeah like or, I, or do the, do it's the, why the, the water the ice down the yeah, pants. Yeah, smack them, throwing water on them, and like, Oof, or you yeah, would have God, enough. I remember that time to like drag them to the hospital. Mm. Um and like yeah, I remember putting people in fucking t cold tubs and yeah. shit like that. God yep. Damn. And all uh, right. so, so how did you get get into the clean? All right. So and this is this is where so um in that end I uh I this has been heavy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Should I tell a quick joke? Do I have to do it? <laughs> I <don't> no. <laughs> so uh, like I have four sisters and like. Physical abuse, like, from my father is, is like, a real thing. And, it, like, I just... I have four sisters, so, like, I was raised by women. So, yeah. like, when women talk about that level of fucking trauma, it really fucking hurts me. So, yeah. like, it's me. It's not you. You're doing fantastic. And I, yeah. I, I love this. Well, and it's important for me. To, uh, like, um, I, I'm grateful now because it means that, like, I can go into the valley with people. Yeah. So... At the end, yeah. Anybody, any, anybody out there, you can survive it. You can survive it, and you can heal. Yeah, and and it can become part of a, a purpose. Mm -hmm. So, and this is the like how how I got into recovery. So, mm -hmm. I was living in a, a shitty apartment in Charles Village with my boyfriend and mm -hmm. his best friend, our good friend Nick, at the time. And Nick had started. Um, you, know, Nick was a, a fall down alcoholic, and mm -hmm. in our world, like that was you know. Keep in mind, my grandfather with AA and all yeah. that. Alcoholics were the worst. 
right? I'm shooting yeah. up every day. But yeah. like the thing with Nick is like Nick could be sitting on the floor and manage to fall over and need stitches. <laughs> like he was that level of like just ragged, just wet real. brain drunk at the time, you know. And and so our whole thing was like as long as Nick doesn't drink, he's fine. If he shoots up with us, if he smokes up with us, then at least he doesn't need to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. But it's like if he drinks, that's when the problems start. Mm-hmm. Um. And he would disappear and come back and not want to hang out. And this dude with long hair kept picking him up. And he didn't, you know, he'd be like, come on, Nick. And he'd be like, no, I need a, a 12-step program. I'd be like, no, nah, you need a one-step program. Like, and and um, What the fuck does that mean? It meant that I thought that the cure for alcoholism was heroin. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, it meant Mary. that, like, thank God I've got the rest of my life to make amends for some of the stuff that came out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so oh, he, yeah. one night, um, my boyfriend and I are walking walking back to the house, and he, Nick's sitting out in front of CVP, Charles Wilge Pub, mm-hmm. drunk. Yeah. And we're like, Nick, you're not supposed to be drinking. Get back to the house. Huh? He stumbles back in the house, and um, he's standing in the doorway, and, like, I'm just, like, tearing into him, like, man, you were doing so good, not drinking, but, like, we know you're drinking. I've been finding the bottles, and, like, what's mm-hmm. wrong with you? You need yeah, to get yeah, your yeah. shit together. Just all of that. And he stumbles back into his back bedroom, shuts the door. Next day, my boyfriend gets up and, and goes to work at a liquor store. Um, and, <laughs> of course. Right, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Um, and... Uh, it comes to the afternoon and it's still really quiet and, mm-hmm. and my girl Steffi comes over and we're shooting up and, and it's like, man, I we haven't heard anything from Nick. Mm-hmm. And so I walk down the long hallway in our apartment, open the door to his bedroom and like I knew what I was going to find, mm-hmm. but I had to open it anyway. And he had taken a flannel shirt and hung himself from our back door. Jesus what? Christ. Christ. And left a note that said, I can't stop using. I can't stop drinking. I'm sorry. A flannel shirt? Wow. Yeah. And um, and so, uh, like, I wish that that had been the thing that I had been like, my, I'm out of control. I've got to get clean. But instead, for a while, that became, like, the reason to double down. Yeah. Um, but, you know, his parents, his family never set foot in our apartment. They would send people our age who I didn't know who would come in twos. You know, the there were piles and piles of key tags. I didn't know why. And then we when we got to his funeral, it was standing room only. And we'd lived with him and we had no idea who any of these people were. Yeah. And it was it was. Can I say the name of the fellowship? Yeah. 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 It was Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. it was his home group that he had gone to week after week and been like, I'm trying to get clean, but I can't. I've got these roommates. I love them. And they'd be like, don't live with them. And he's like, I have to. And um, that was my introduction to, to N.A. And like I, I was I was talking about this recently, like once I realized who they were, I was expecting them to be horrible to me. Oh. And instead, there was just like nobody tried to toll step me, but there was also like compassion. Mm-hmm. Like there was nobody like get out. You yeah. you're the roommate. Get out. Yeah. Um, and like that. So between that and uh, then the other real like thing that clicked in my head was I had you know that girl Stephanie, a friend of mine, she had disappeared for a week and then come back, and like I could tell she wasn't dope sick anymore. Mm-hmm. And she said that she had been at, I was in her apartment and her coffee table was covered in stickers and random stuff. And one of the stickers said, spoons are for coffee. And I was like, what? I was like, Where did you get that? She's like, oh, I was at a party at the convention center. Like, wait, what party mm-hmm. are they giving out those stickers? And she said, it's a drug addict party. Like, the, wait, <laughs> there's a drug addict party at the convention center. It's like, yeah, it's all weekend, and they give out stickers. Mm-hmm. It was a, a convention. Yeah. But they, it, in my head, I was like, wait, there are these people, and they have a sense of humor. Yeah. And so, you know, it was many months later that I hit the end of my road. It wasn't, I didn't know, like I was saying earlier, I didn't know that normal people like me could go and get help at a rehab. Yeah. I didn't know a detox was a thing mm-hmm. until after I'd gotten clean mm-hmm. and detox myself. And I was pissed yeah. that there's a place <laughs> you yeah. could go and like doctors, but like, 
you know, I had a friend who he didn't want to talk to me for years when I was in active addiction. And he was like, hit me up when you're ready to change. And he was in New York and I called him and I was like, hey, can I, um, I got to get out of Baltimore and I mm-hmm. got to go someplace safe that's so far away that when I start detoxing, I can't drive back because yeah. my habit was so bad mm-hmm. at that point. I was always sick. I was, I was just, uh, I mean, and, and yeah, this is pre fentanyl, but like it was, it was bad. It was yeah. so expensive. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I managed to struggle bus my way up to upstate New York and, um, just, you know, was sick, threw up mm-hmm. for like two days. And the only thing, you know, I, I revealed to my parents finally, cause they thought I was like out of my mind, crazy. I told mm-hmm. them about the abuse that so they thought it was maybe that, but like, they didn't want to know that it was drugs. Yeah. Like, I think some part of them knew, but like not, yeah. not my daughter. Yeah. And so when I told them, like they were horrible. My mom, I broke my mom's heart. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, I absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and it's taken a lot of years to undo the damage of that. Thank God I've been able to, but like, yeah, so I went to upstate New York and, and they were like, well, what's your plan? And I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to an NA meeting. And I didn't know that that would help. I just didn't have a better idea. Yeah. And I got to a meeting, absolutely sick, and, um, and I felt welcome. Mm-hmm. And so that was uh, October 31st, 2010. Mm-hmm. And I did my version of clean, which was still yeah. smoking weed. But like, for me, it was like, yo, if I can just get back to Sarah 420, I'll be good. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like that was like, that yeah. was my plan at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it was like, I want to be that girl who like, mm-hmm. because I that was where all my friends were. I was there walked you in. To, yeah, you wanted to get back to the functioning yeah, addict. I, of... I could roll a spliff so good, it would make <laughs> you cry. Like I took out a student loan to go to Amsterdam. Like it was my wow. identity. Yeah. I worked at a head shop. I, I would listen to Bob Marley on the way here this morning. Like it was huge. <laughs> I was. And mm-hmm. so I didn't have any, when they talk about like, oh, recover, I was like, I want to recover Sarah 420 as an identity. Mm-hmm. And and so I was like going to meetings, but like I didn't want to hang out with people because after the meeting, I was like, I'm going to go get smoke up. But I wasn't doing any of the other drugs, so I thought I was fine. So that's what took me down to Florida. I, I was in that first NA meeting. I was like, yo, I don't know what to do. And they're like, no matter what, maybe don't go back to where you were living. And so the only family that would like let me stay with them that was a good choice was in Florida. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Florida was the recovery capital. I just knew I had two sets of aunts and uncles. For better and worse, yeah. Yeah, so I ended up um, on the beach in uh, Sarasota, Florida. Nice. By accident. I didn't plan on moving down there. I just went down there and was broke Mm -hmm. and stayed. And up until two years ago, that's where I I lived and I built my whole recovery. And I'll say, anybody who's listening, if you ever want to go on a recovery vacation, Sarasota, Florida. My home group was a beach meeting at 9 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. Like we would go swimming with like manatees with and the then dolphins. yeah and then like go to go to meetings and bonfire the dolphins meetings. make me cry yeah <laughs> and um so that's where I, I built my my whole world i i um eventually finally got that like i, I wrote it before i could say i can't stop getting high like it mm. came out of a pen one day and i was like Ooh. that's where i'm at nice and i i wrote it and i was like that was something else just wrote that for me and I told somebody, um, I was like, I'm still smoking weed. And they're like, yeah, we know. And um, so I picked up a white key a white key tie, and that was January 27th, 2011. And um, I've been, you know, in recovery ever since. And, um, you know, my whole, I've done a million things. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, for me, like, I did the hardest thing ever getting clean. Yeah. And so everything else is gravy. Everything else is just like video game life. Mm-hmm. You know, like like the recovery world, no matter what it looks like, just like finding a community, finding some principles, finding people to help you. Because I know, I've known people who've gotten clean and sober from a bunch of different routes who live big, good, full lives. But like mm-hmm. they all kind of have these same elements. Yeah. And like you do that, man. Like I've lived like three, four lifetimes. Yeah. And and oh, yeah. and like I've done so many things and I feel so free. I've made a lot of money and don't make a lot of money, like all of that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just it's it's crazy because I get that it's all borrowed time. Mm-hmm. Like I shouldn't be here times five. Mm. And um and and you know ending up back here in Baltimore, I didn't think I would be back up here. Yeah, it was a weird series of like 
higher power coincidence times 50 things that brought me back up here. Um, I never thought I'd feel safe living here again. Mm -hmm. I never, like, I spent a good year, like, I can't drive in Hamden. I owe people money there. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just moved there in January. My home group is in Hamden. Like, I'm, I can. Which one? That would be surviving against all odds on Wednesday night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that (laughs) such chestnut and, uh. The Avenue, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Across yeah. from the Charmery. I remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, it's uh it's it's a blessed life now. It's so weird how fun it is to live in Baltimore because this was like the hell mouth. Oh yeah. I mean it still is, but it still is, but we're but on the all, other side of the fence. All of now. those great restaurants, man. All those great restaurants. <laughs> all those great restaurants. You know, Baltimore's <laughs> known for syphilis and opiates. I, yeah. also syphilis, Ikebon. HIV, and heroin. I yeah. miss, and Ikebin. I yeah. miss living in the city. I actually just heard about them on, on 98 Rock yesterday. Yeah. yesterday. Oh. Dude, I, I'm like, I'm going to check that place Tofu out. They sound, they sound fucking oh my fantastic. God. Have you uh, ever had broccoli make you cry? No. Eco bin? Yeah. Ikebon. I Ikebon. I don't yeah. know what that is. It's, it's a local restaurant. It's got, like... It's like fusion, yeah, Asian it's fusion, food. Yeah, fusion, Asian with, because he makes like burgers too. Yeah. Right? But yeah. like like fried chicken and, mm-hmm. um, Dude, oh yeah. God. And yeah, the, the 98 Rock Boys, we were hyping it up yesterday. It's real, out of control. Real big. And yeah, I'm all, I'm all about it. Well, we definitely have some questions. Eric, what you got? Or you want me to go first? Well, well what, what, no, hold on. What the fuck? How do you, what, Ecobon? E-K-I-B-E-N. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm way... Isn't that the guy's last name? Uh, I don't know. You, it's so they had they had the owner on there. It's there's so vibing when you go of, in. Yeah. There's no small talk. It's like a club in there. And yeah, and that's like, what they were saying. Broccoli like the, tempura. They were like the culture like, about it I'm sorry. is yeah, really I mean, what's up. Just all the vegan stuff that was being thrown out. I need to find out what this is first. You know, as a vegan, I can say I love that place because I can eat tons of good food. Am I the only carnivore in here? Yeah. Ugh. For God me, it's emotional it. reasons. No, I get it. Have you ever loved a cow? I yeah. know, right? That like, right? If you ever have been you ever around... watched them be like golden retrievers? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. when and the, then you, eat I them. get it. The mom I, gets I, separated and I, the baby I, cries. Do you they know how intelligent? Ter- do you we're, know how intelligent not, pigs are? Listen, we're not going to go down. Are you this aware road. that they know over? You can teach them over hey, so, no, twenty we're not commands. Doing this. We're not doing this. Hey, so I'm about to try to catch a charge stealing beagles from Hopkins because they're still doing testing on them to wolves. No, beagles. 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 They have 17 or 18 beagles in Hopkins right now for unnecessary Why? experiments. I'm coming for you. Why? I've made it this far with, if I'm going to have a getting, charge. We're, we're reeling this back. We yeah, got to reel I'm this sorry. back. Okay. Anyway. Questions. Go, Eric. Do you have one or do you want me to go? Well, I mean, when are we going to go steal these beagles? But go, go ahead. You go first. That's a Towson <laughs> University alumni this is event. This what I fucking <laughs> deal with. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love the animals, man. Fucking you know? wrangling cats are around here. Uh, I'm going to ask both of you this. This is going to be a roundtable question. Um, what do you think the real failure of D.A.R.E. was for oh, our generation? Because oh. it was clearly a failure. It's a great idea, but uh, first, I'll, uh, I'll start. Like, I... I think they're starting because it was in elementary school. It was in like fourth or fifth grade that I did that shit. There's no reason that a fucking 11 year old needs to be exposed to that shit. No way. Well, like uh, it, uh, 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 I get it. You, you, what? you are an example of why an 11 year old needs to be exposed because you were already smoking cigarettes. I get it. That's right. A, like that's, that's a valid the whole point. point that's a like, valid point. But then they, they like they show you these the other drugs. But the way they did it is wrong. The it way should... they the, like the the, the act of way they did. Yeah, they opened up the attaché of all these fucking drugs. And you're like, this is weed. This is cocaine. This is and you're like, oh, cool. And you're seeing all these Hollywood movies where it's fucking cool. And then you're seeing American Pie where they're fucking drinking and like it. Oh. I, I, like, is that what you got out of American Pie? I got fucking pies out of American. I pie. don't know. <laughs> But that's, that's my I'm just example. saying, like the party culture. Like, yeah. I mean, like we saw Animal House and all and, and all those oh, like yeah. teen movies where like these parties look cool. Right. These they like, were cool. They were cool. And and we had we had cigarette commercials where it looks cool, and and they still have beer commercials where they make it look fucking cool. So like an eleven year old telling an eleven year old don't do that. It's like ah, you're well, on the telling ver- anyone you're don't on the verge that? of being an autonomous human being, and like I just I like the don't do that is the problem yeah uh, that's the whole issue yeah we if we took away the don't do that and we were like yeah. okay here 
here's the options, right? Like, I, I, you yeah. could do drugs or you couldn't do drugs. Here are the effects. Yeah, the, 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 like, the, here's the, what will happen. The failure, in 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 my opinion, yeah, is the, is absolutely the way they went about it, not right. the idea. Because I think all drugs should be legal. We've yeah, discussed so this many times. So like, it would be a better, like, it would be a better world. It's a, it's a debate. Yeah, it is a debate. Um, well, you could also meet people where they are. So I don't know if it, it works in other countries. I don't know if it would work here. Yeah, I think it would well, work here. People talk about the Portugal model of harm reduction, mm-hmm. which is considered like the the highest standard of why having like needle exchange and decriminalization and all of mm-hmm. that. But when you look at the Portugal model, the reason why it's effective is because you actually have an integrated governmental system. And so they can put well, together that. a mm-hmm. series of things where it's like, it's not like you can go there and be like, I'm addicted to heroin. They're like, here, have some more. There's also, there are still consequences. They're just not criminal consequences. Mm -hmm. They can take away uh, professional certifications or the right Mm -hmm. to drive or whatever. It's a societal harm reduction and it's coordinated. Yes, exactly. People talk here, talk about harm reduction. They're like, oh, we're doing harm reduction because we've put a van of needles in a parking lot. You want to reduce harm? The biggest thing you could do is when somebody wants help, have them be able to get transportation to help right away. Well, don't I don't take... want to hear anything else about harm reduction unless the people who want help can get help. Yeah. Everything else is just like political masturbation. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. Absolutely. You really want to do good? People who want help should get help. Fucking A. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it's drug addicts that takes, make other it, drug addicts. Uh, yep. And it's a systemic infrastructure from the bottom up that, yeah. that needs to change. And America needs to be fucking willing to fucking do it. Well, right. And have those fucking conversations. Drugs will never go away. No. no. They'll They're never, never go, go away. away. No. So it's why been th- fight it's been it? thousands of fucking years. Right. Like, why like, fight it? Yeah. And fucking like... Alexander the Great was giving his soldiers fucking opium. Like, it, this right. is a fucking thing. Like, the Nazis were on meth. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it is a thing. I thought the Nazis liked meth. I'm sure they did. Yeah. yeah. They I thought did. they were all about amphetamines. They yeah. were. Yes. Yeah. Hitler's. Yeah. Whole yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. He that's loved amphetamines. The amphetamines. That's, that's what kept him fucking mm, all shaky. Was he uh, shaky? Yeah. I Hell yeah. Hitler. Those I mean, shaky Nazis. He, he was Those a, shaky Nazis. I thought, you know, yeah, you have to be, he was a painter, you know, I just figured. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That was that was yeah was whatever that was, that was before he was mustard gassed. Uh, um, the so, failure of dare. Yeah, I I would posit that the failure of dare is because it doesn't ever give an accurate explanation to kids as to why people do drugs. Mm. It is based on some BS, like because the dark dealer at the corner of the baseball diamond yeah. is convincing you, but like they're going home and seeing dad drink a six pack mm-hmm. and like not because w- like, what are they going to be honest and be like, your dad drinks because he's an uninteresting, lazy, entitled person yeah. who and, has no purpose. Yeah. And that like or every other Or he's stressed out to the fucking and max and right. he and he Has doesn't no have the coping, coping skills. skills yep mm-hmm. right and Absolutely. so and so if they're not going to explain to people like the here emotional are the reasons and psychological why, aspects and yep. the alternative mm-hmm. the fact that like the thrill that you get from those things like like i mean and that's kind of what recovery is about for me like mm-hmm. the reason why I, I do so many things is because the part of me that's a crazy addict isn't going to go away yeah i got to do my own harm reduction yep. for it so for mm-hmm. me it is airsoft paintball lately it's been roller derby mm-hmm. uh four wheelers traveling going back what's to your school. roller derby name you ready for this <laughs> cotton fever cotton fever all the normal people on the team, they're like oh what's cotton fever they have no idea what that means they're like okay do we call you cotton or fever <laughs> Your choice. Go with what you feel. <laughs> yeah. What an amazing. But no, that that's like, that's a fantastic point. Yeah, the showing showing. Yeah, me. like it, and and that's what recovery is. Recovery is showing that there's a different way of life, and this is how you go about yeah. it. And that's that's literally what it is. I'm uh, sorry, hurt your derby. I'm still in your derby name. Like only only a heroin addict understands what that means. <laughs> like like that's it. I understand what it means though. In the heroin. Well, you have a, you, have a spoon. you have a spoon. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, spoon, I do have a spoon. Right? Yeah. I have a spoon with a hole in it. Thanks, Herb. Yeah. Uh, all right, what you got, Eric? Um, I'm gonna go with one of our basic questions. I'm gonna go with uh, basic bitch. Yeah, like um. So where where has uh, addiction been manifesting itself in your life? Oh, that was most my mostly. Question. Lately. Uh, you're talking about the current moment? The current moment, mm-hmm. yeah. What's, We're, what's What's getting your jives off lately? Doing nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've done whack-a-mole with the big stuff, done the, like, gained weight, lost weight, spent money, learned how to save money, mm-hmm. did, you know, I went to school and worked 
full time. My last round of steps was a lot about overworking and my identity yeah. being professional stuff. Why are you looking at me? Um, you don't overwork? How many monitors are you looking at? No, I'm just kidding. I only have seven. Um, <laughs> I only have seven yeah. monitors. But besides I don't the two know, on the probably. floor right there. <laughs> but yeah, it's weird how, so I moved into this new place. It's the first place I've moved into without a, a boyfriend or a partner or a roommate since my shitty apartment when I was 21. Mm -hmm. wow. It's really cool. And it's in Hamden. Mm -hmm. And I have this dog now. I've never had a dog before. This baby Shiba Inu. Ooh. He's crazy and amazing. And so like, oh, Shiba. I am the least productive than I've ever been. And like for a little bit, it was like a very spiritual, I am at peace. And then now it's like, I don't want to do anything. And it is, again, that like everything will be fine. I have earned the right. I don't feel like it. Maybe tomorrow and all of that. Because like it, the if the core of the disease of addiction is natural dis-ease, mm -hmm. I am a comfort-seeking creature. Mm -hmm. And so I will unhealthily seek out things that make me feel at ease mm -hmm. and right now what makes me feel at ease is doing as little as possible yeah. and like um the bad roommates thread on reddit oh well, I'm not that's all oh reddit. inconvenient cop reddit for a long time was the one or yeah. instant karma mm -hmm. but now like mm -hmm. bad roommates or mildly i'm a big fan of am i the asshole i i like boomers yeah. being fools Oh yeah, <laughs> Reddit. Fools. Dude, Reddit also is... hold my Cosmo is like maybe. Oh my, my god, one. Reddit was. Oh my god, Reddit my was Cosmo. steady for the longest uh, time, and Reddit is taking like they're coming back yeah. so hard. Give me and I all love the it. girls falling down love drunk. It. Oh, the hold, hold my Cos. Like there are just <laughs> some that are just so good. Like, yeah, it's just like you're just like, oh, oh, I love Reddit. I'm like Charlotte. No, yeah. you're not. You have a broken heel. Go right. Fuck off. But it's the best of fuck everything, off. you know. It's like it's MySpace, it's Tumblr, it's, Tumblr here. it's Facebook. Yep. Like it's it's, it's all everything. It, you know? Reddit yeah. is amazing. And I like that it has like you know it has like the not safer work and the safer work together. Yeah. Know? I went through this period um, where I used a Reddit account. I fi once I figured out that a lot of the local reporters in Florida were on Reddit looking for stories. Yeah. I started f seeding Man in fake Florida. urban rumor, like urban Florida. legends mm -hmm. into the local things about like, does anybody know why the goats start keep showing up in the housing development and like continuing to be like f like putting up posts of like these goats randomly shoot and then reporters would be like, can you give me more information? Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best That's use of Reddit. Um, do 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 do. All right. Um, <laughs> um, this is gonna be a two part question. So, how have you like, how have you recovered from like? your history of trauma with men and uh, really developed your own level of self-confidence to like not put yourself in that, in that situation anymore and, you know, heal from that. Yeah. So like a 12 parter. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, as a, a smart philosophy kid, mm -hmm. I underestimated the power of of step work, and mm -hmm. I I kind of dragged my feet on it. Like I I worked some steps with one sponsor, and then switch, and and all of that. So it was it was a couple years before I really did the full deep dive, the mm -hmm. deep four and five. Um, and you know I've I've done some therapy since then, but mm -hmm. the, for me it really was it was step work, and it was actually getting that. If I am nothing else, I am my story. And that is like the thing that I can give to other people. Um, you know, I, I was saying how I explained what happened to Nick and that I was at a funeral yesterday. Mm -hmm. So um, the the brother of, of the girl, Alyssa, whose funeral it was, um, I got a call from him five o'clock in the morning when he found when they found her. Mm -hmm. And because of my experience. I can go in the trenches and mm -hmm. that's part of what ha has me work through it and resolve it. Not mm -hmm. in some like God has a purpose, but like I can make a purpose from it. Yeah. I don't think that God purposely like has horrible things no. like have. I don't believe in that kind of situational thing, but I yeah. do believe that the, that like the universe has helped me figure out what used to make of it. And there's so, a causality. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I am, um, I did a lot of work with, um, I have some friends who started women's recovery houses in mm -hmm. Florida 
cetera. Mm. And so I was helping them from like the business side of things and I was sponsoring girls. There's a really great organization down there called Sailor Freedom that works with women getting out of sex trafficking. And so like being able to be there for other women and other girls who've gone through traumatic things yeah. and being able to like love them mm -hmm. and and them love me as a support that did healing more than any other yeah. thing um yeah, being able to imagine. like take care of of um and now I, I work in the field and you know again like being able to be there for people there is Nothing a patient can say to me that will surprise. I mean, every once in a while, they'll say something like crazy. Mm -hmm. I had a, a patient who was, you know, stolen by, you know, a cartel, which that was the last thing that was like, yo, what? But like, as far as like trauma and abuse and um, violence. Did they deserve to get stolen by the cartel? What? They did not. The fuck, Eric. Well, well, I'm just asking, well, did so they know? His did family know. was part of a different one. And I think the cartel kidnapped him thinking they could get a ransom. And then the I mean, family was like, we're not going to pay for seen... him. So they just deposited him in a graveyard. And so he had abandonment issues because the family, I don't know, it's a whole, it's amazing. Because yeah. what's well, amazing. Ozark, yeah. right? Like, I mean, you know, those people did deserve to get kind of yeah. yeah, to die in the beginning of the movie. He they did, stole he a lot did of not. money. He is an, an angel. He's an innocent one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes people deserve it, David. Yeah. He's he's not one of them. I could think of five other people who I think the cartel should have ducked. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you that did one. I tell you about I'll the beagle puppies? Just yeah. saying. Yes. Yeah. I'm watching you. <laughs> Johnny Hopkins and Sloan Kettering yeah. are smoking weed on uh, the bleachers every day. Sarah 420 is coming for you. Sarah 420 is coming. Um, all right. Yeah. Did that's I answer fantastic. your question? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what you got here? All right. So you can only pick one. What is your favorite step and why? Ten. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay. There we go. The pamphlet. Good job, that David. Right? I hear you. Right? Hear What's you. my favorite step again? Your favorite step is 10. Mine's three. Three's a good one, too. Three's a good one. I wish three was my favorite. Yeah. I wish I was that kind of person. I wish I was a little bit taller. No, I, was, well, I wish three. God, I, I wish I was, I was taller. taller, too. Oh, God. I wish I, I was wanted a to be six. I, I wanted to be six. I wanted to be, I wanted to be um, Not because I'm, like, God-centric or anything, but... Um, like just the just the way it was broken down for me because yeah. it was like oh what what attributes are your higher power you know he's loving he's caring he's compassionate he's generous blah 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 and then he's like okay do those things yeah that's a that's turning your will over because you're not loving you're not compassionate you're not honest and like that's not that's not who you are at your core mm -hmm. so in me me living a new way of life is being those new things yeah so that that's why three is my favorite but yeah, yeah ten's always a great answer why is ten your favorite. Um, because it's constant. It's like the, you know, four through nine over. Like, you're working the steps all the time. Do you? Mm -hmm. Did you write through the pamphlet? Did you do the... I did all of it. The pamphlet you, every day for 30 days? I did, I did four. No, you I didn't do 30 that. days. I did not do 30 days. No, no. fuck that. I, I chose on the not challenge. to. Fuck that. That is a challenge. That is a... I don't have the time for that anymore. No, like no. when I was uh, that's a young man's game. <laughs> that is a young man's She's game. She's playing the world's smallest She's right. for you. She's right. That's <laughs> no, how much do David, you want it? David's like when I was uh, in early because I did my fourth step both ways. Mm -hmm. I did it with um, the step working guide and I did it with the pamphlet, mm -hmm. which I think the pamphlet's the real way you should do it. It gets way more in depth, <laughs> but ten's great. Yeah, it's just um, yeah, it's for like ten. I think the the goal the goal of ten is for me is to realize I'm an asshole before I'm an asshole. Yeah, it's to, yeah. It, the, it's, to it's to catch you in four, five, six, and seven, yeah. and prevent yeah. eight and nine, and to prevent four. Yeah, prevent yeah. it because that's well, what yeah, I was yeah, talking yeah, yeah, to my yeah, therapist. Yeah, sure. I was talking to my therapist about this yesterday. I was like, I was like, really, ten is about preventing. Like at this point, it's about preventing four. So like that's yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's making four shorter for sure. Well, because I, I so much of six and seven is like exposing the results of our default ways of being to mm -hmm. the point where like we create uh, an emotional bottom for ourselves. For me, that was the experience with a lot of mm -hmm. six and seven. I was remember. Yeah like jealousy. I thought that I natively was always going to be a little bit jealous of like 
hot girls in my male partner's peripheral. Like, it was just natural, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it, it cause it's- You can't eat bitches. Why is yeah, that? Yeah, and though? I wouldn't, it wouldn't, wasn't anything I would act on, Yeah, you know? And so I thought, okay, because it, I, it doesn't- well, I'm ever, jealous of prettier dudes than me. It doesn't come out of my mouth All or whatever, but it doesn't mean that like- It's, it's not it, in the head. Like, I don't have in a physical reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And then doing the writing about it, like what effect does it have? What is it costing the other people in your life and all of mm. that? Um, and I just did another six and seven with with codependence and people pleasing oh. and really getting how much I'm robbing the people in my life who love me exactly as I am of my attention for the sake of following people around who who don't treasure my attention. Mm -hmm. And how much I when I thought about these people that I love that like I don't have time for them mm -hmm. because I'm chasing somebody else around yeah. who who wants me as like their life executive assistant or their yeah. best supporting actress. Yeah. Yeah. Like really getting how it all fits together, like boom, in an instant I change. And that's how 10 was for me. It's mm -hmm. like, I remember writing about like um, being short with a an employee of mine who like, she was out of control. When mm -hmm. she, when I disciplined her for something, she stopped flushing the toilet. Like, <laughs> like that was like her like revenge against the boss. Like it got That's weird. That's the definition of quiet quitting, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, so did ever... she just drop a shit and like leave it there for you? Oh, it got it was it was Don't gross. It was traumatizing it. my other what? employees. Don't fucking say it. Say what? I know what you're thinking. You son of a Whatever bitch. you're thinking, I'm just that's thinking how of it shit. was. Like, I know, and I what? It's not. Nah, yeah. We're not going. No. Yeah. No, I'm thinking yeah. about like like actually, I was at okay, so I was at the O's game the on Monday, oh, I was and um, I okay. went into the stall and someone shit on the floor, and I was just like, why? <laughs> Why does this always happen? Like, like, why do people do this? Like, is there a reason someone, like, the toilet's right here, but you shit right next to Dude, it. Dude, my cat's been doing that by their litter box. Mine too, mine too. It's, it's them getting old, and it's also, like, they get upset. Um, like, if you... Like, it's like revenge shit. They might be getting upset. It's only happened since Magnus was born, though. Oh, then they're pissed. Yeah, you. they're pissed yeah. that I have a son now. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're like, I'm not the baby. And it's like, no, I have a human child now. Maybe you have to Dude, hold God. your baby over the litter box. And like, <laughs> it will like assert dominant. <laughs> like the thing I love poops in the litter box. And then the cat will be like, oh, the, whatever poops in the litter box. He's 11 years old at I this point. I don't have children. Not, yeah. I don't know how they work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My child does not poop in a litter box, everybody. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's a, a bad, bad advice. Bad advice. I mean... It might be good advice. I don't know. I've never tried it. I don't know. We're trying to potty Can train you, now. You know? Imagine <laughs> a kid like in the litter box. Dude, oh, my son, get out of the litter my box. My son would love that. It's just like a sandbox. <laughs> they have It's just like a sandbox. Has your kid the touched difference. the litter? My kid hasn't touched it. No. Like, they know it's kind of like, that's no. fucking nasty. I'm not yeah. touching this shit. <laughs> yeah. He like goes close to it and he's like, Ew, gross. Smells weird. Um, All right. Last question, David. We're, we have, we got to, yeah. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. Um... How do you keep long-term recovery fresh? Mm. It's toughy. Yeah, I mean, I think that really understanding and appreciating how free I am and like not getting myself into positions where where I feel trapped, big or small. Because mm -hmm. really, like if I'm in touch with how free I am, you know, I, this this will show you how much of a nerd I am. Ooh. In one of the books, in one of the books, in Step 11, it talks about like our goal is to be free with or without, with or without a partner, with or without mm -hmm. the approval of others, with or without materials. And like when I get that, it means that like all of this like I get to play, so I get to change and travel and move and mm -hmm. and all of that. If if I'm not having fun, if I'm not enjoying it, that's on on me. Mm -hmm. Which also means the opposite is true. Like we we get to do whatever we want. Yeah. If I stay clean and stay in touch with it, mm -hmm. I can live a big life. I can live a quiet life. I can try all of these things. Like mm -hmm. I'm on borrowed time anyway. And yeah. so it's that. It's recognizing that like I am only trapped in the extent of the promises I think that I've made, but like it's all can be revised. And so because of that, like, man, there's so much to do. There's so the much to see. To evolve. Yeah. yeah. And to enjoy it. Yeah. And 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 all of that comes from staying in, in touch with the program. Yeah. You know, and like, just a level of just constant gratitude. Yeah. 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 It sounds corny, but like, yeah, sticking around sticking around newcomers and seeing their pain and being like, woof. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call, call me when you need me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My phone's still on. Yeah. Give me a jingle. Yeah. All right. Well, you are off the hot seat, so we would like to thank you for joining us today. Woo! Yay! Great. Fantastic job. Like, that was... That, that's an amazing podcast. Happy 420, y'all. Happy 420, everybody. Don't smoke weed. Or um, be Hitler. Right? Or be Hitler. It or, is Hitler's birthday. Or do a yeah. Columbine. Ooh, yeah. Oh, God. That was 422. Was uh, it? Oh, wow. I believe it was. Uh, yeah, quick shout out to my uh, brother-in-law, Mark. Love you, buddy. Uh, it is your birthday. You're old as fuck. I don't know how old you are. Um, one quick minute talking to the people out there struggling. Yeah. Need to hear a message, but what do you have to say directly to them? Ask for help. Yep. Ask for help. Keep asking. Yep. Um, it, it, any place you think you can ask for help, ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's out there. It may be in a form that doesn't look like it. It may mean you have to ask for help and ask for help and ask for help again. Mm-hmm. If you're afraid to ask for help because you're afraid of getting help, know that if you get the help and stay clean, you will have the opportunity. Life will demand that you pay that back. Mm-hmm. So don't don't think you can't ask for help because you'll be on the hook. Life will put you on the hook for it. So just just keep asking because yep. it's out there. Yep. It, I mean, if 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 I can do it. If other people can do it. Anybody can do it. Yep. All right. Also, methadone is a prison. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right. Yeah, Fair enough. That's true. Uh, all right. Uh, we would like to thank our guest, Sarah, for joining us once again. And I normally have a whole spiel, but since I'm recording, I can't read it off my phone. I should have it well, memorized. Well, just, just, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, you know, it's fine. It's I've fun. read it enough. Read it enough. Here at Podcast Recovery, we're aiming to expand the scope of support for recovering addicts. Accessibility and convenience of helpful services is paramount to combating addiction. Uh, and we work to bring the message of recovery to every addict wherever and whenever it is needed. And we believe that a powerful voice of recovery should be obtainable, practical, and at the touch of a button. Uh, yeah. And so wherever a voice is needed, podcast recovery is here to provide it. That was pretty good off the top of my head, off the top of my head. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us once again. Go to all our social media outlets, like, share, subscribe, go to our merch, get some cool shit. Uh, especially Eric's awesome doorstep thing that says what? (laughs) What does it say? It says sit down, shut up and listen to the message. There it is. Uh, yeah. And join our Patreon. We, we do need help keeping the mics on. We are self-supporting, but most importantly, everybody out there. Stay safe and stay clean.